Hello ladies and gentlemen, in this video we're going to learn about sorting arrays and so this will be a good reinforcement video for your understanding of arrays and how they work um, and also we'll cover this important uh, thing to understand, how to rearrange an array uh, so that uh, it's in order such as the first values are smaller than the later values uh, or vice versa where you've got large to small um, it doesn't matter the uh, algorithm is the same and so in this video we're going to talk about selection sort which is one algorithm one way of sorting arrays there's actually all kinds of different algorithms or methods uh, to sorting arrays but this is a simple one to understand and um, so here I've got some code already started I've got some function prototypes that I've defined um, that we're going to actually implement and so so we've got print array. Uh, you've seen this before. Uh, it just accepts an array, this case an array of strings um, and a length and uh, then it outputs what the array is. So it's going to print out each one comma separated on the same line. And um, remember when you pass an array it's always a good idea in C++ to include the length because um, in C++, the uh, length is not an attribute, it's not a member of the array. An array is just uh, a sequence of values. Really what you're passing here is just the location of the first value. So it, the computer doesn't know, it doesn't keep track of how many values are in this array. So pass it to the function, that way the function can accept any length array and still work. So we've got print array, then we're going to create a swap function. It's just going to exchange two values stored in variables. And so we've got two parameters, they're passed by reference because we're going to actually change the values in them um, and so that's useful because obviously if you're swap if you're a rearranging values in array you want to swap them right um, and then here's another implementation of swap uh, it just accepts a different number of parameters so we've got an overloaded function here two functions with the same name different parameters and um, this one accepts an array um, of strings and two indexes and so it's going to swap the values at those two indexes you could use either of these we're going to implement both just to again strengthen your understanding of what's going on here um, and then smallest values index so in the selection sort what we're going to try to do is find the smallest value um, in the array and move it to the top and then we'll search for the next smallest value and move it to the next uh, first unsorted place and so forth and I'll walk you through that later but so we well, need this function here and then finally the selection sort um, now it's important to note that you could uh, you know find the smallest value inside of the selection sort function and you could also have swap there and not have all these separate uh, functions however it's a good idea to subdivide your problem to sub problems and solve those that way you've got this functionality that you can use for other tasks but also it's easier to just kind of think about the small problem and uh, what it does and also test it to see if it works uh, rather than writing a large amount of code um, and a large function um, that uh, then you have to test the whole thing um, so here's our main function and it's just got a test array so an array of eight names and you can see um, they're not in alphabetical order but when we sort them they will be and uh, then we're going to print the array and then we're going to perform our sort and then we're going to print the array again so this time it'll be sorted um, so right now these functions aren't implemented except the print array so here is the print array function and you can see what it does is it uh, loops through all the values in the array um, starting at index equals zero up to the length and outputs the value stored at that index followed by a comma and a space and uh, it'll do all of that and then at the very end after everything a new line and so that's our print array function you'll notice the swap functions aren't implemented yet let me just show you what the code does as is so if i flip to the command line i have a already run it here so you can see i've compiled it and ran it and you can see it outputs the names and then followed by the names again but they're in the same order they haven't been sorted and that's because we haven't written the selection sort so we can compile and run the code selection sort compiles it just doesn't do anything yet and so we we have that ability to implement and then compile and test as we go um, so let's implement this first sort function or swap function so swapping two values uh, what a lot of amateurs are tempted to do is just this value one equals value two and then value two equals value one now the problem with this is you're replacing value one here with the value of two so then when you go to this second line here and you uh, want to set the value of value two you're just setting it back to what it already is and so you end up with just value two twice um, and so what we need to do is store the value one in another variable um, temporarily to hold it and so i'm going to create another string variable here called temp 
and uh, actually we can just assign it right here to be value one. That way we hold value one. Uh, so that way when we replace it down here, that's okay. Because down here, we're going to just use the temp variable instead. And so now we've got a working swap function. I think we should test it. Another thing that I can do um, now with the C++ standards um, updated, we can use the auto keyword here um, to automatically make this a string variable because temp value one is a uh, string variable. So this is good practice because, um, you know, if we changed our function to accept uh, not strings up here, we might forget to change this value here. Um, and if we make it auto, then it automatically will be a string. Or if we change uh, the parameters to be ints, it'll automatically be an int and it'll still work. Um, so that's handy. Um, so we'll set that as audio there. Let's test this function. Uh, let's just see what it does. So in main, um, before the selection sort, which isn't really doing anything, uh, we're gonna just swap two values. So if I say swap, and I wanna swap um, the values at in the array. So let's see, um, it's called my array. So I'll swap uh, at index one. Remember that's the second um, value in the array. So we start with zero and uh, we'll swap at index two. So we'll call our swap function there. And um, then when we print our array, it should print the second part backwards, right? Um, the second two values. So sure enough, Jackson and uh, Olivia are swapped here compared to what they were um, in the initial output. So our swap function seems to be working pretty well. Uh, so I'll comment that out. That's just a test code. Um, actually, we don't need it there. We verified our function is working. It's a good idea to test that your functions work uh, as you create them uh, rather than writing a whole bunch of code and then testing. Um, okay, so we can write this function the same way. We could say auto, um, we need a temp variable still, and we can set it to, in this case, we've got an array value. So looking at the index there, and it, uh, it's going to follow the same template. So here we're going to say instead of value one, we're going to say uh, the list at index one equals the um, list at index two. And then we've got um, the list at index two equals what we stored in our temp variable, right? The string uh, that we temporarily stored there. So here it's important to realize we're uh, still uh, swapping values, but we're doing it at the indexes uh, given. So if I wanted to, um, I could test this code out. Let's see if it does the same thing. Um, so we'll call our swap function this one that accepts first an array followed by the two indexes. So we can say one and two and um, make sure it does the same thing as it did last time. And you can see sure enough, Olivia and Jackson are swapped from what they were originally in order. Um, so that's working with our other swap function. Now one other way we could write this swap function down here, uh, we could um, just call this swap function up here because um, we're passing it two strings. So I could just say, well, this is really just a swap of uh, the list at index one and passing it the list at index two. So that's just another, another way to do it, right? Just call the other function that does the swapping. Um, and that way there's potential to have less errors in your code um, because we can just change something here and it'll affect both uh, swaps equally. Um, maybe, uh, maybe a little simpler here, as you can see also to write. Um, so that'll work identically. Um, so now uh, we've got the smallest value of. Before we do that, I want to talk a little bit more about the selection sort and just how it works, um, why we want to have um, this function in the first place. And so I've got a visualization here. So here's our array. Um, so you can see the whole thing is unsorted. Um, and we've got Sophia at the top and Aiden at the bottom. And so what we're going to do is uh, the first thing we're going to do in the selection sort is find uh, through the unsorted list uh, the, f the slowest item, the item with the smallest value, uh, which would be the first one in the alphabet, right? And so that's going to be Aiden. And so what we're going to do is we're going to move Aiden to the top, to the beginning. So we're going to swap Aiden and Sophia. That's where our swap function comes in. And so we move that to the top and then we note that uh, the first item is sorted. Now we're going to look through the rest of the list. So from Jackson to Sophia, we're going to try to find the smallest in that, which is Ava. In this case, we're going to swap Ava with the first unsorted index, which is index one now. And so we'll swap those two and then Ava's sorted and the first unsorted index is index two. And so we'll look through that. Emma's the first one. Now here we've got two Emma's, so we could choose either. Uh, it would work the same uh, and still give you a sorted list 
with either one you pick. Uh, it just is a matter of which one you swap with initially. Um, so here we're going to swap the first Emma with Olivia, and uh, that counts as sorted. And then we're going to swap the second Olivia with or Emma with Liam. And so that will be the next one that we do, and that's so sorted. And so then here we're going to find the smallest value out of what's left, indexes 4 through 7. And so uh, we'll use that function, uh, smallest values index, and we'll find that that's Jackson. We'll swap that with Olivia, and uh, then we'll look at the next three. Um, and Liam is the next smallest one, and so it's right where it needs to be. You could swap it um, with itself, but it'd be in the same place. Um, and then Olivia, that's the next. And so we're done. Um, you know, Sophia, the last one, um, you can't swap, uh, anything. If the only, there's only one unsorted thing, then the whole thing's sorted, right? Um, you can't have just one unsorted item, uh, in a list. Um, so that's how the algorithm is going to work. And so here, what we're going to do is we're going to find the smallest index looking at our list. Um, and starting at this start index. And so um, initially the starting index will be zero, but after we've sorted uh, the first element, we wanna start looking at index one or index two, depending on how many things are sorted, right? So here I've got just a kind of a initial um, uh, shorthand for our array. Um, and so abbreviations of the names here and um, their indexes uh, that we can refer to. So what we wanna do is we wanna have an array that goes through all the values uh, we want to have a loop that goes through all the values. And so we'll create a, a variable to be our index. And we're going to start at, um, initially we normally start at zero, but this time we're going to start at um, the start index. So initially that will be um, the first value, right? But after that, we might pass it something different. Um, and note here, I've got this min index here. What we're going to try to do is find the minimum value. Here, I'm assuming initially that it's the first value. And so what we're going to do is we're going to go through the rest of the values and see if there's anything smaller. And if it is, we're going to update our minimum index. Um, so we're going to assume that it's uh, Sophia here at index zero um, until we get to something smaller. Um, and then when we do, we'll actually update that. So we'll say, well, this is the smallest. And then we'll keep going and updating until eventually we say, oh, actually, this is the smallest at the end and update it. Um, so if we assume this is the smallest, we're going to set this index to be things that we compare it against. Um, so we'll say while the index is less than the length, because we're going to go to the end and then plus plus index. And then inside our loop here, uh, we're going to say if now this is important, we want to look inside the list. So if at the location of the of, of the current thing we're looking at, uh, if at that index, if that is actually less than what we think is the smallest, so the list at the min index, min index, if that's true, then we need to update what we're uh, looking at, what is the smallest. And so here we can say that the minimum index should now be what we're currently looking at, the index. And um, that's really all we need to do here. Um, at the end, when we finish this loop, we'll have um, the smallest, the location of the smallest value. Um, and so here we don't want to return the smallest value, we want to return the index where it's located. Um, and that's important also. Uh, now, one thing I can do to optimize this, um, the first time through this loose lip loop here, uh, we're actually comparing uh, the same value, right? Index and min index are the same because we actually set here min index to be the start index and we set index here to be the start index. And so what we can do to optimize that is we can just add one uh, to our um, thing here. That way we start at the next value. We don't need to compare it with itself. Obviously, it's not going to be less than itself, right? Um, so we, we can skip that uh, one. Let's see if this works. Um, so before we write our swap function, which is going to be really short, um, let's just see out here. Smallest uh, index is going to be um, smallest uh, values index. We'll pass it our array and the length, which um, I've declared as this constant. It's a good idea. Array size. Okay, so if we um, go back to our command line, I'm going to go ahead and clear the screen. Got a lot of stuff there. Recompile it. Oop, what's the problem here? Forgot a semicolon. Right here. I bet you guys saw that. All right, now flip back to the code, compile it. 
good it compiles. I'm gonna just reset it and call sort. Um, and you can see the smallest index I should have had an endl is seven. And um, if we uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, Ava, no, starting with zero, sorry. Uh, so Sophia is zero, Jackson is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yeah, so that's correct. Aiden is the smallest um, value. So didn't quite format that very well in uh, main here, but we're this is just temporary code, so we're going to, um, sorry, this is just temporary code, so we're going to get rid of that anyways. Okay, so now comes down to the selection sort. So this function is actually going to be pretty simple. Remember, what we want to do um, is really just two things. We want to uh, take our list, search for the smallest, so that's find smallest index of, and then swap it with the first unsorted, um, and then set first unsorted to be one, and then swap that with the first unsorted. And so what we need here is we need a um, iterator, an index, to go through uh, from the beginning uh, down to the end um, to track the first unsorted, because every time we sort, we move down one value here. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to have this loop, I already created it here, um, that goes from the first element uh, to the end. And this is actually our our location of the first unsorted value. Uh, when the whole list is unsorted at the start, um, then the first unsorted is the very beginning. Uh, but after we sort one, we move one to the top, um, then we can increment this. Uh, so that what we're going to do is we're going to find the minimum index, and we can use that our first unsorted. Um, so uh, first, or um, let's see, I for, forgot what that function is called. Uh, smallest, smallest values index and we'll pass it our list and the length and we actually want to start here at our smallest index right because that's the first unsorted um, and then we'll say um, really a simple way would just to be swap um, on the list the min index with the current index, the, remember the current index is the first unsorted. So if we swap those two, uh, then the, the smallest value will go to the top. And we can actually add um, just a little bit of efficiency here by saying, you know, if they're not in the same place, if they're not already sorted, right? So um, if the min index uh, does not equal the index, so they're not the same thing stored in the same location, if that's the case, then let's go ahead and uh, make the swap. Um, and that's it. Uh, so here what we'll do is we'll start at index zero, we'll find the smallest value for the whole list, um, and then we will see if that is not the original uh, value, then we'll swap it, put it up, and then we'll go back up, uh, index will be one, so here we'll find the smallest value starting at index one, and uh, then find that smallest value, and then if they're not at the same location, we'll swap them, um, and then repeat. And so we'll go through this process. Let's make sure it works. I'm already calling this function in main, so we can just go back here and um, I'll go ahead and clear the screen. Where is my, there it is. Call sort. And there it is, our array sorted. Aiden, Ava, Emma, Emma, Jackson, Liam, Olivia, and Sophia. Um, and so we have a sorted array. And, you know, it would be a good idea if you ever write a function like this to um, change the values, you know, see what happens if you do something a little bit different, uh, make sure it still works. So what happens if, you know, I put Emma first in the initial array? Does it, uh, whoops, does it still sort? So compile our code here, call sort. And see, Emma was first, um, but after sorting, our array looks exactly the same um, as it did in the previous call because it is in order. Um, so that's that's the selection sort. Um, it's not the most efficient algorithm. So the selection sort is probably one of the slower sorting algorithms. There's lots of other algorithms that sort faster. Um, but one benefit of the selection sort is it's very easy to understand. Um, so coding wise, it's not bad. And also, um, it minimizes the number of swaps that are necessary. You only swap an element uh, once uh, or, or um, an element wants to put it in its position where it's uh, good. And so you'll always have n swaps and you'll always go through the n elements exactly the same amount of times. 
Um, so there's some differences in other algorithms. Uh, it's a really interesting topic to consider efficiency and how you can swap uh, more quickly. And there's all kinds of different algorithms that work in different situations. So if you're interested, um, definitely look into that. But this is just a, a basic introduction uh, with the selection sort using arrays. So I hope you learned a lot. Um, and as always, if you have any questions, let me know.